Hello everyone, my name is Fan Yang. I'm the technical marketing engineer for the CSR1000V. Today we are going to talk about how can you deploy the CSR in AWS to provide a high availability for your VPC connection. So before we're talking about the HA, most of the customer will question will be how do we provide the redundancy a gateway on the cloud? So one thing you should be notice is that uh, on the cloud, you cannot do layer two packets, which means the broadcast or multicast are dropped in their cloud environment, like AWS, like Azure. So the protocol like HSRP will not work there. So in order for the CSR to act in as the gateway and also to provide a high availability or redundancy, here is the solution we introduced today. So um, in this topology, you will see there are two CSR running in the CSR subnet, and those two CSR are working as a HA mode. And you will have your application subnets in the other side, say subnet A, subnet B. By default, there will be one route table associated with each of the subnet. So the route table will point into the CSR1 as active. The CSR2 and CSR1 between them, you, there will be a GRI internal uh, established, so they can exchange the BFD packet. It's like a keep alive packet. So after CSR1 is done, the CSR2 will get notified after three BFD packet loss. So it know, okay, CSR1 is done. I have to change the uh, AWS REST API. I will make a route table change code to the AWS REST API to let the route table changing the next hop to CSR2 itself. So after, after that, the subnet A and subnet B, they will just use CSR2 as the uh, next hop. So that's how the HA works on AWS. I have tested with uh, extended ping, and the failover time is uh, sub-second, so it's less than one second. And to deploy this solution, you can we have the deployment guide, and you can follow the deploy configuration guide to configure all the uh, CLIs on the CSR. But in this demo, I want to show you uh, using the cloud formation to deploy the CSR and also the uh, VPC as a whole. So you can have a uh, greenfield deployment uh, with the cloud formation template. So let's take a look at the cloud formation template we are talking about. So this is the cloud formation template uh, that I, I wrote. So we will, you can define the VPC, uh, IP range, the public subnet, or the private subnet, what's range, and you can choose the CSR type. So you can do uh, 500 meg, 1 gig, 2 gig, or 4.5 gig. And uh, it also has the license model you can choose. So it's it's just the will be automatic map to the uh, red army ID. And it, in the resource um, area, you can see I will create the uh, VPC, I will create a subnet, I will create an internet gateway. So everything inside of that VPC or HA VPC I'm talking about will be created through this cloud formation template. So one thing I want to bring up before I do the demo is that the solution will create two CSR running uh, in the same VPC. And it will have the public uh, interface uh, connect to the HW. The private interface, it will not be associated by this cloud formation. So after the CSR has been fully booted up, you have to associate uh, yourself. Because when the CSR is booting, if you attach interface, uh, the CSR is not able to uh, Detect it, so we recommend you to attach the interface after the cloud formation template has been deployed. So let's do the uh, demo. So here is my uh, AWS console. I'm in the Oracle region, so I will just go to the uh, cloud formation tab. I'm gonna open a different tab here. Okay, I'm gonna create the stack. Just choose the stack I have. Uh, AWS HA. Okay, let's use let's use this template. Next, so let's just call the uh, Oregon HA VPC. 
I choose the smallest uh, footprint. You can just ch change the uh, army ID and to the CSR type uh, once you have the template. This is the key I have, and choose BYOL, and this is my private subnet, this is my public subnet, this is my VPC setup block. You can, you can enable termination and production or not. So for the demo, I just use no. And next. And I acknowledge it. Okay, so right now you can see the whole stack has been uh, created and you, with the events you should be able to see those resources have been created. Let's just give him a couple minutes and after the CSR has been built up as I mentioned you have to associate the interface yourself and the configured IP so then it's working in the HTML. Now you can see all the EIP, all the VPC, all the Internet Gateway are creating in progress. It, it normally will take around 5 to 6 minutes for all the uh, components to be created. So I will come back after the CloudFormation template has been done. Okay, so after about 5 minutes, if you do a refresh, you can see the CloudFormation has been uh, created, the whole stack has been created, and if you mo monitor the events, you can see the EIP has been associated to the CSR, the instance has been created, and the uh, route on the network interface has been created as well. So then let's change back to the EC2 page and we do a refresh. Okay, so now you can see there are two CSR, we call HA CSR1, HA CSR2, has been created by the uh, CloudFormation template. And also the status is two, two by two, so which means it's already uh, functional. So let's get the public IP of this one, and then we can SSH SSH. Okay, so we are in CSR one now, and the other is the CSR two. Okay, so this is CSR2. This is CSR1. So as I mentioned, you only have one interface uh, attached, but the BFD internal or the GR internal has been, let me remove this one, has been created bef uh, already. So you can see uh, the internal is up. If you show BFD neighbor, uh, the neighbor is also up. So which means the, the configuration is, is working uh, uh, it's working correctly. As mentioned, you have to attach the secondary interface. So let's go to the network interfaces. The interface has been created uh, anyway. So let's take a look. So those two interfaces, you see uh, 1.96 and 1.136. Those two interfaces, we have to attach those two interfaces to the uh, CSR. So that's just. Uh, uh, let's make sure we, we have we have to attach a specific one to CSR one. So how do you tell that? You should go to here, and you can see there is um, CSR two. CSR1 private interface. Okay, create a completed. And this is the inner ID, so it's a. Uh, let's just copy this one and we can search here. Okay, so this is one we will attach to the CSR1. And uh, the other one will be CSR2 private interface, it's this one. attached to a CSR2. So now let's go back to the interfaces, uh, instances. Uh, if we click CSR1, you see there are two IP, so the other one is 1.136. 1 so I can just, so now you should be able to see two interfaces. The gigabit 2 is done, so just configure the IP.
Okay, it's up. And let's configure the CSR too. So it's 1.96. T show. Uh, so you can see the gigabit two is down also. So let's configure the IP. Okay, so the second IP is up. So now let's go to the VPC page. So this is a VPC page. You can see we have two VPC that's filled out by the HA VPC. The subnet, you can see we have uh, 0.0, 1.0, public and the private. The route table, uh, we have two route table. So this route table is associated with the uh, private side. And the other one is associated with the public side. So the public side, you see already uh, have the HW attached. And uh, the private side, it also have the default route point to the CSR one. So this is a uh, one night E. If we go to here, we click CSR one. The Ethernet one is one night E. So basically, the subnet is already using CSR one as the uh, active gateway already. Okay, let's verify the configuration. If we do show run, you can see the redundancy configuration is pushed by the D0 config um, bootstrapped by the user data. So you can always configure the part after CSR is boot up, but the automation will make it easier. So if you go to the cloud formation template, you can see this config, they are all bootstrapped by the user data, like the interface tunnel, BFD, or the redundancy configurations. So let's take a look at the redundancy uh, status show redundancy. Redundancy cloud provider AWS one, and you can see this is running, has all the information. And do it here, also. So let's do a quick test of the uh, HA. Instead of creating a virtual machine and uh, initiate a ping, we can just monitor monitor the route table change. If we go to the VPC, let's check the private route table. You can see it's pointing to the one nine E which is the CSR1 specifically. So if we do a terminal monitor on the CSR2, let's monitor the log. And on the CSR1, we can just shut down the tunnel to do a quick uh, test, or we can just reload. It doesn't matter. So let's do a reload. Reload CSR1, okay. So after three BFD packets has been lost, CSR2 will be get notified, you can see. The neighbor is down, it has detected, and also it says the cloud HA BFD status transitioned. AWS node 1 event replaced route successful, so which means the API has been already made. If we do a refresh, okay, you can see now it's pointing to a 395. So what is 395? If we go back to the EC2 instance, we click CSR2. The second interface, the private interface is 395. So which means the uh, API has been made, the route has been changed. So I think that's it. So in this, in this demo, we give you guys an overview about how the CSR hybrid availability works on AWS, and we use the CloudFormation template to deploy the whole setup, uh, it include the uh, day zero config as well. So it's almost day, it's almost zero config on the CSR to make make it work, and we shut down the CSR one, and the CSR two take over the traffic. And you can always find the configuration guide on our Cisco.com. If you search Cisco CSR high availability on AWS, you will go, you will find this guide, and it has all the details which I showed in the uh, this demo. Thanks for watching.